Hello, my soccer universe. The unthinkable happened. Bayer Leverkusen lost the game. Not only lost, they threw away a game. They had actually won and they could have extended their winning streak to 36 games unbeaten. It stops at 35. They had a 2-0 lead going into stoppage time of halftime. Frimpong and Grimaldo, very convincing. Campbell keeps Leipzig around and then it's Openda who scores two in the second half in the 57th in the 80th minute after a Lukeba goal was already called off for an offside earlier on and Leipzig celebrated like they had won the championship. This was not the only remarkable result that happened yesterday. Stuttgart had a 2-0 lead against Mainz, were packed back to make it 2-2, then they score late a 3-2. You think they finally get the first win of the season and then in stoppage time Mainz can equalize to make it 3-3. Schlotterbecker sent off in Bremen and so Dortmund only managed a 0-0. There we also saw Frankfurt 3-1 over Hoffenheim, Wolfsburg 2-0 over Holstein Kiel, newly promoted team still waiting for a win and Gladbach getting a 2-0 win at Bochum. Well, Sunday's Bundesliga action seemingly was all about Thomas Müller breaking the record 710 games for Bayern Munich scoring 16 seasons in a row. He gets a second goal in a 2-0 win over Freiburg after Harry Kane converts a penalty in the 38th minute. However, Bayern do not sit top of the table at the moment because Heidenheim beat Augsburg 4-0. Huge result for them and they for the first time ever lead the Bundesliga. Yes, it is only after two games, but it is remarkable nonetheless for them. In the Premier League, Arsenal dropped points at home to Brighton, which I find sort of acceptable given how well Brighton started. However, they had the game under control, Harvard's giving them a 1-0 lead, however, early in the second half, Bryce gets sent off for the first time ever with a second yellow card for a stupid touching the ball and preventing a free kick. And João Pedro shortly thereafter makes it 1-1. Mikel Atet, of course, not happy about that in the end. It is a draw. Arsenal still could have won this game. At the same time, City, on the back of uh, Erling Haaland hat trick, beats West Ham United away from home 3 1. We also had Everton having a 2 0 lead in the 87th minute, still managing to lose 2 3 to Bournemouth thanks to two stoppage time goals. Ipswich manager 1 1 against Fulham. Brentford 3 1 over Southampton. Leicester 1 2 against Villa. And Forest and Wolves 1 1. The early kickoff in the Premier League saw Crystal Palace get their first points with a 1 1 draw at Chelsea. Nick Jackson gave Chelsea the lead, however, AZ then equalized in the 53rd minute. And this is what we will probably get for, from Chelsea. Brilliant performance on one day, and then not so once on the other one as well. In the second match, that could have gone either way. Newcastle beat Spurs 2 1. Barnes and Isaac scoring to two goals for them. I'm not sure what to make of Spurs this season yet, but Newcastle might be interesting again. You know, they have now midfield with Tonali being back. Let's see how where this will go. But of course, all eyes were on Old Trafford, where Liverpool visited for the first duel of the two ball Dutch managers, and it was all Liverpool. This could have gotten really, really, really ugly. Uglier than the 3 0 scoreline away from home even suggests it was Ravenberg winning the midfield battle over Casemiro, who is really not up for it. Luis Diaz scoring two goals in the first half after one by Alexander Arnold was struck off because Salah was offside. Salah actually in really good form as well, getting a third goal, and then Liverpool were cruising. Really big win for them, and they look actually quite well at the moment. Hello my soccer universe. At this very moment it is not controversial to say that Barcelona are the best team in La Liga. They become totally unhinged beating Valladolid, a Valladolid team that went to Real Madrid and losing only 3-0 and had actually a chance to get a draw out of it. 7-0 fully deserved so. Rafinha getting a hat-trick, scoring the first, the fourth and the fifth goal in between Lewandowski, Koundé and Dani Olmo and Ferran Torres complete the route. Absolutely amazing stuff on the Hansi Flick. The question is can they keep it up? That's I think the only question at, at the moment but if they can keep it up they are a real challenger for the Spanish title. We also had a remarkable result in Bilbao where Atletico Madrid get the win 1-0 away from home. Nick Williams had a goal denied and very late on Perea gets the win for Atletico Madrid. We also had remarkably Espanyol scoring not one but two goals already. The first two goals were seizing, beating Rayo Vallecano 2 1. Mallorca get a way win at Leganes, and we also had Valencia and Villarreal in the Derby de la Comunidad ending in a 1 1 draw. 
All eyes are on Kylian Mbappe ever since he arrived at the Bernabeu and finally he delivers. He scores a brace in a 2-0 win over Betis Sevilla in the 67th and he also converts a penalty that was given to him by Vini Jr. So all looking good for Real Madrid at the moment. Still wasn't very convincing. Still Barcelona seemed to be the better team at this very moment. But you know, there's time for Real Madrid to figure themselves out. Other games we saw Osasuna get a first win over a Vigo team that was actually quite good so far. A 3-2 Girona get a second win in a row. 2-0 at Sevilla. Sevilla team also a little bit teetering on the edge at the moment. And Real Sociedad also seemingly having trouble. Only a nil-nil draw at home to Getafe. La Real probably have lost too many players over the summer and need to find themselves. Hello my soccer universe. The game of the weekend in France happened already on Friday when Strasbourg visited Lyon having a 3-1 lead in the 58th minute. However, Maitland Niles quickly pulls one back and then gives Orban two goals and by the 72nd minute Lyon had converted that deficit into a 4-3 win. Other notable results are Brest beating Saint-Étienne 4-0 getting the second win in a row so things are looking up for them again. Not 3-1 at Montpellier. We had Marseille going to Toulouse winning their 3-1 staying close to the top of the table. Monaco actually drop points. They had a goal by Zakaria in the 84th minute. Simeone gave them the win over loss. However, Frankowski penalty late on secures the draw. So Monaco also staying up there, but you know, not quite hitting the highs yet. Then Reims beat Rennes 2-1 and Lille lose at home to PSG. A PSG team that already had a 2-0 halftime lead through a Vitinha penalty and Barcola, of course. Chegrova pulls one back late to kind of add a little bit of suspense to the game, but Colomani seals it for PSG. PSG team that is still very much top of the table alone unbeaten so far. Only a very late penalty by Marcos Leonardo in the seventh minute of stoppage time saves Benfica from another embarrassing loss. This time at Mora Range, however, it was not enough for Roger Schmidt, who got duly fired shortly thereafter. And Benfica off to a really slow start and are already in somewhat of a crisis. Something does not apply for the city rivals and reigning champions in Sporting Lisbon, who get a 2 0 win in the big one over Porto. A huge matchup already early in the season. Gökker is a penalty in the 72nd minute, and then Satamo in the third minute of stoppage time makes it 2 0. Sporting are still unbeaten, have now won four games out of four, 16 goals scored, two conceded, 12 points, three ahead of Porto, who still remain in second place. Rather remarkable stuff for. The Leones. Because of police strike, the Classica had to be postponed. Feyenoord against Ajax was not played this weekend, and so PSV get another win, of course, 3 0 against the go ahead Eagles. And it was another easy win for them. Till in Lausanne already before they have before Wehrmann in the 63rd minute seals it and makes it a proper scoreline. Probably the outstanding result was Utrecht beating Twente 2 1. Utrecht staying up with PSV kind of a little bit, as to a Z with a 3 0 away win at Walwijk. Groningen, after the good start. The points dropped at Almere look a little bit like a disappointment. However, you know, they were also 1-0 down to them, but it's great to see Honingen back. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon, so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!